experiencing unexplained malfunctions. Look at this. The flag's gone. Tracks. They aren't ours. They lead away from our sector. Well, December 14th, 1972, the last time a human stepped foot on the moon, or was it? The government would have us believe that Apollo 17 was the last manned mission to the moon, but as we all know, the government doesn't always give us the whole truth. If you take NASA at its word, Apollo 18 was cut for budget reasons, but not according to a new film entitled Apollo 18, which claims the mission did happen and with rather disastrous consequences. For more on these claims, we bring in famed nuclear physicist and UFO researcher Stanton Friedman. Uh, Dr. Friedman, what is the... Mr. Uh, Mr. Please. Friedman, sorry. <laughs> uh, what is the logic behind the Apollo 18 uh, film? Well, the idea is that it is conceivable that secret missions were planned by NASA and carried out and turned up with some uh, extraordinary evidence of strange things going on the moon. The moon's supposed to have no life, no activity, just what we do up there. And there has always been a question. The 18 and 19 were built and paid for. The crews were selected. And the excuse was, well, it would cost too much money. But the money had been spent. So there's always been this puzzle. What really did happen? And some people can't believe governments can keep secrets. I worked under security for 14 years uh, for little companies like GE, GM, Westinghouse, Aerojet General, Those are et good small businesses there. And, yeah, yeah. And I've been to 20 archives. I wrote classified reports. Uh, I, so I have some feeling for how security works. And I've been chasing down the UFO scene uh, since 1958. And one of the things I've found is that it's easy to prove that various government agencies have lied, to put it frankly and bluntly. And uh, the press has not done its job in digging out those lies. And, and so go ahead. Now, I'm just going to say that I, I am pursuing the truth, uh, and I, I brought along, just to give you an example, it took me five years to get this CIA UFO document, which is very exciting. You can read eight meaningless words. Now, that's not the only one like this, but, I mean, it illustrates the problem. And, and, and so, many, it, oh, go ahead. No, just that many people think if you have a clearance, you have access to everything. The other thing you need is a need to know. And there are millions of classified documents out there that you can't gain access to. Yeah. Uh, some people don't want to believe that. We, it's democracy. We have to know everything. That's not the way yeah. the system works. And, and at this point in 2011, uh, I believe everybody knows we've got a bought government uh, one way or the other, I guess. Uh, yes. From your, <laughs> we, and we've all, we're all, even those in the deepest of denial as they watch what's bearing out in front of our country in the terms of its uh, extraction and all the rest of it, uh, gets it, I think, or is getting it or is learning about it. Uh, what would be the incentive in the, in the case of Apollo 18 to distort, lie, or prevent the understanding of, of what happened? Well, the whole question of alien life, uh, of people doing things that we don't know about in places that we don't know we can get to, all that, it is of great concern. It means we're less important than we'd like to think we are. It means there are forces at work about which we know nothing. And, you know, just a simple-minded example, the first successful U.S. spy satellite was a Corona spy satellite. Went up in 1960 after 12 failures in, in public. Nobody knew about them. Uh, it got more data about Russian military installations than all the U-2 flights that had preceded it. Now, we didn't find out about it. We, the American people, didn't find out about it until 1995. That, that's a pretty good example of keeping secrets. Yeah. The National Reconnaissance Office, which runs those big, expensive satellites, some of them cost half a billion dollars, announced about three years ago they'd canceled a program developing a new satellite architecture with Boeing. They had only spent $13 billion in secret. So anybody who tells you governments can't keep secrets doesn't know what he's talking right. about. And so the interesting thing, because I think as we learn about the bought nature of our government, as we learn through anecdotes like yours about 
uh, the ability to control information on certain things and, and more importantly, expend resources secretly on things we don't know about. As we uh, uh, come to understand that by virtue of the benefit of what we now have, the Internet, connectivity, Facebook, we can learn in a way that never has been possible in the history of the world. What do you think the implications are of the capacity in the meta universe to know things that were never known before colliding with not only an American government, but global government that has been bought and duplicitous for centuries? Uh, uh, there are real, really serious implications. It's like the question, what difference does it make if uh, flying saucers are real? Who cares? So what? Well, if it changes our view of ourselves, who's going to negotiate and speak for the planet? Uh, that's a problem. We're yeah. not going to hold an election. We don't have 1.3 billion people like the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It changes our view of ourselves. And when the day comes that we start sharing secrets with each other, that will see a, a difference in things. So the world is changing. Copernicus was wrong. Earth is not the center of the universe. The sun isn't the center of the universe. Some people can't handle the blow to their ego. Blasphemy. The earth is not the center of the universe. I can hear him saying it now. Unfortunately, the arithmetic and fact are very much on your side uh, when you look outside uh, in the sky, uh, Mr. Stanton. Thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate it. Or Mr. Friedman, excuse You're me. You're very Friedman. welcome. Thank you, sir. Stanton Friedman, uh, nuclear physicist. Coming up here, Chris looking at what appears to be the GOP's uh, final three for the White House. But first, a little time on a Monday with Kelly Goff and a rant about the F word. And I don't mean that one. <laughs>